welcome back to the series. This is the Garden Room series and in this exciting edition, we are gonna be finally taking away our temporary floor. This floor has been serving as my workshop as well. The reason we did this is to enable us to do all the insulating over the top, all of the vapor barriers, all of the cladding, get our electrics in and everything, that's all done. So we're gonna take this out. Now, I might have mentioned before that this floor, the OSB, and all the materials, so the joists effectively, are gonna form the stud work at the other end of this room here. So we're gonna get this out, we're gonna sort it, take all the screws out, sort those, reuse those, put the OSB to one side, and then we're gonna get on and build this wall all the way through there. And it's gonna be another milestone. Yes, and inside the pool, there is loads of material that we've been storing, so it's gonna be good to see what we've got for all of the work. So we've got all of the pool stripped over, we've got the OSB off and we've taken the joists, sorted them, we've put the OSB to one side and now we're gonna build the wall, which is a continuation of the end of the shell, if you like, okay? So we've left these bits in here while we work. Now the simplest way to do this is the top of the shell, or the shutter that they put in, isn't perfectly flat. So I don't wanna attach my sole plate directly to that. I'm gonna shim it, I'm gonna shim it with plastic ply. Now the final water level is about 120 mil down from there and the tiling or finishes will carry straight on up and there will be a junction, like a reinforced junction, um, a bit like what we put underneath floor tiles, which will go on the wall and that will stop any cracking and all that sort of stuff. So the wall surface is all absolutely perfectly true. Now the other good thing about our timbers that we're using, they've been over this temporary floor and it's been made my workshop, as I mentioned, for absolutely ages. Now they're perfectly dry and they're not gonna shrink anymore, which is fabulous because when you fix a stud, the bigger the stud, the more the shrinkage. And what happens is as soon as you get your heating on all the rest of it, the studs start shrinking. And that's where you could get a crack between something dead solid like concrete and the stud shrinking back. So we're not gonna have that problem because this is so dry, it rings like a bell. So when we build this wall, the best way to do it is actually build it flat, stand it up. Now, I've set a laser up. I've got this sole plate rodded off the back wall, which is perfectly true. So it's nice and parallel and it's parallel with the shell. We've got a laser line set up and I can see that's exactly in line with the boards, which is nice too. So everything's gonna be parallel to the ceiling that we put in. And then what we're gonna do is build it, stand it up, put a tilting fillet in, and then screw through to these counter battens here and actually hold it. Then we're gonna shim it underneath to make it nice and flat and true with the plastic ply and some really nice flat plastic shims. And then we'll put some concrete fixings straight the way down through that. We'll then fill that joint all the way underneath to give it some solidity and keeps that plate obviously off that concrete. And that's it really, so we're gonna get on now. Now the reason why we're not gonna put this sole plate in, put head plate in, and then go along fixing the studs is, it's just a much nicer job to make a complete frame and stand it up plumb it up so you've got everything's all the fixings done down low level we're not standing up here trying to do this trying to do that uh, we'll keep the top of the stud square we've got to bring some cables through into the stud work here so we'll keep it square and then we'll make a really nice tilting fillet that goes all the way through the top that we use to fix it in so that just eliminates 
the need for trying to make it exactly the right pinch point on the height. So we're gonna get on now. We'll take some measurements. I'll make a rod. I'll cut a stud, which is up against the ceiling on the angle there. I'll try it in a few places, and then I'll make my adjustments accordingly. I'm gonna get it as close as I can to fit in perfectly, but obviously all we need to do is find the highest spot and make that the stud length and we can't go wrong. So So I'm gonna get this measured just for the rod. So I'm gonna just measure down my green line. I'll knock a little tiny bit off, just a mil or so. I'm gonna measure down a meter and I'm gonna measure up to that because it's a lot easier than trying to bend my tape in like this. Okay, I can read what it says like that, but it's still a bit hit and miss. But at least this way, if I've got my tape butted up against the line at the top there, right where it's gonna hit, measure down one meter, then I can butt my tape on and really easily measure the exact length, all right? And so we've got 1,422. I'll knock a couple of mil off. So we call it 2422. It's around about eight feet, so 2422. I'll check it down there. So it's 2422, that's the overall length, and this is an 18 degree roof, so I'll put a cut on, I'll set the saw around at 18 degrees, bosh, and knock it straight off. Then the idea is I'm gonna come and try that in and see that it fits mostly everywhere. We are already shimmed up on the plastic ply, so we've already got some tolerance in there, but as I said before, that the datum here is a little bit undulating, there's a couple of concrete snots and that sort of stuff. The normal sort of thing when you get like a, a concrete shuttered and poured shell. And then once we've got that, so we'll have a stud with an angle on the top, we can then es establish how high we want to make our wall. We're going to make our wall square on the top, then we're going to make a tilting fillet which will fix everything through. Okay, so we're going to get in there and do that. So I've got the stud, we'll go and cut one, whack it in and try it, and then we'll, from that we'll make the overall wall, make it flat, stand it up, done. Chop that up on the saw, put a square end on it first, and then it's nice having this extended, extended table. Now I wouldn't normally do stud work with a chop saw, just use a circular saw, but to be honest, this is here, that's there, I can easily wallop it on, and they're all gonna be the same size as studs. So once I've cut the first one, I'll screw my stop end on, and then there's no measuring, it's just really straightforward. I can say, okay, Ed, you go and cut all those studs. I can be setting out and getting everything ready. So we're working as a team, and I always think that's pretty good. So I'll put a square end on here anyway. I mean, these end, the ends of these joists are pretty good anyway, but I'll always put a square end on. It's just a habit. <laughs> then what I need is to bring the saw round to 18, which is the angle of the roof. So we'll bring that round to 18. Slide our timber along and we'll measure the length. Cut that off and that can be our height rod. So let's give this a go. So what we've done is I've knocked a couple of mil off when I measured it, just to enable us to try it in. Now, what, all I wanna know is that this is not too tall as a rod. So we're sitting on the sole plate, we're with the laser line, and I can see that I've got a few mil up there, which is good. Now we'll try that on in a few more places. As I say, the actual level at the bottom isn't brilliant, but we can see it still fits in this position too. And we'll check it here. It's nice and plumb. I mean, we're pretty looking pretty good. I mean, on the whole, it's virtually the same all the way along. Let's try it down here. So that's on just the shim size. So we're a bit tighter at this point. Now, this was the high side of the shell. So what we need to do is actually make our adjustment to suit this end because you can see it's a bit of a, I mean, it does go. It does go. I think that, what, I think we're wise to actually stick with this. Now what I'm going to do is we're gonna make our wall square. So I'm gonna adjust 
this stud and I'm going to keep the top of the stud with the back of this cut. So we know that this is okay in the height. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the top of the wall to the highest, the back if you like there. And then we're obviously going to have our head. So one thickness of stud. And this will give us our stud length. All right. So that is our stud length. Now we've got underneath this sole plate that we measured from, we've already got three quarters or 20 mil thereabouts of plastic ply here. So we know it's going to fit. Even if it was tight, obviously the plastic ply can just reduce and that can become the shim underneath. We're going to go and leave the end studs out, make the wall and stand it up. And the reason we're leaving the end studs out is because I want to get these wall faces on and then put the studs in. I can't put the wall faces on yet because I've got first fix services to go in here, followed by soundproofing and insulation. So we'll do that afterwards, but we need to get the structural wall up to allow all of those services to come in and um, be in situ. Right, let's get these studs done. Um, we're gonna use the studs at 400 centers as well, just incidentally. So we have just laid out all our studs ready to go in the wall. We have stacked them on some bites and we have just looked across all of them and put them in an order of the flatness. So some of them are a bit bigger, some of them are bowing out. So now when we put our wall together and look down the line, it should be a lot straighter than it was if we were trying to just throw them in in any order. So yeah, we looked look down them and now they're all ready to go. They've been marked up and we're going to put them in together now. So we've got the head and the sole plates made up as one length. I've just got to trim this one to, to the exact final length. And I've marked it out as well. So I've got all the studs marked on. We'll take this in, this is the sole plate. We'll transfer the marks to the head plate. We've got all the studs prepared, uh, enough to get us together. We could just end fix this and stand it back up. So it's very straightforward. Now, we're gonna use studs at 400 centers, okay? But in the middle of the wall, we have a special dehumidifier and air heater which goes through. So we've had to allow for that as well. So we found the center of the room and we set our studs accordingly. And so we know this is the center of the room in our case. This stud and this stud are slightly off the 400 centers. But then we've kept all the rest to the 400s from the center either way. So when we put our boarding on, it's only just slightly out. So we put, if we put a board from there to this one, perfect or from this one to that one, it's perfect again. So that just means that you can move the stud slightly and you can still get your boards to work, providing you lap the move stud. So I've just got to continue marking this one. I'll get my rod, a rod measuring 400 mil centers, obviously. So I'll just pop this on to continue this end. Now we've joined it on. I've got one conveniently on the middle of this joint here, which is really nice as well. And then moving swiftly on, We'll mark this all up. The only one we don't need to mark is the wall stud on the end, which we're not going to be putting in at the moment. So we'll just square those across. I actually like to mark both sides of the studs. It's just, you know, you're not going to make any mistakes then. Um, again, we'll just mark these across. That's ready to go now. So we're in here now, we've got the head and the sole plates 
roughly in position how far they're apart. Now Ed will stay at one end, I'll stay at the other end, and we will start bringing the studs in that Ed's just sorted all out into the sort of nice order. So we're gonna leave a couple out at either end. That enables us to get the wall ones fixed without the last second to last studs being in the way. We'll leave those out and then we'll get the main bulk of it in, stand it up, plumb it up, fix it top, fix it bottom, and it'll be really nice. So Ed's just about to come through. I've got to get my nail bag on. We've got our nail guns ready and the nails, etc. So we'll get this wall fixed together and it'll be the business. All right, so we're gonna miss the first two, go on number three, all right? We're going to slot this piece in, which is the middle section, which we just knocked out. And the reason I don't knock out of this is because it's impossible to fix without skew nailing the other bits. Let's get in a sensible position. So this bit's going to slide in here into our our little bit here. Okay. Okay, that's it. And that gives us our letter boxes that we're looking for. Okay, so now we're going to brace the wall square. So the wall's complete, everything's in the right places. And as I mentioned before, we've got our plastic plywood. These are like feet effectively. This is what separates the timber hitting the concrete. Now the timber could hit the concrete. There's not a problem there. There's no damp or moisture. I'm gonna get into it unless there was a catastrophe or a leak. So what we've done is used the level, the laser and a staff and we've just positioned all of these little bits of plastic ply so they're all nice and level. So what we've got to do now is put a brace on the back of the wall to keep it nice and square. We could put it up and just do that with a level, but I like to put a brace on and then when we put it up, when we level the bottom, everything will be plumb. It's already done for us. So we're gonna put a nice long brace on, stand the wall up, secure it at the top, nice and tight, and then we'll screw it into the concrete shell below. 
So this is the moment of truth, mate. Mm. So we're going to lift him up. I think you watch your head. I'll watch mine. I can catch the glue down, and you can probably catch that bang. But yeah, yeah. And it will have a tendency to want to run forward, but um, we'll just keep in control of it. We can easily carry it after three. One, two, three. Gently, gently. Watch your head now. Keep going. A bit more with me. A bit more with me. That's it. I think that's pretty good. Lock it in at the bottom, so roughly where we knew it was going to be. Yeah. And go a bit more in your end in. That's it. That's looking good. And then you can pull it forward yeah. and put a screw in. And all you're you supposed to do is bite and hold it. So we're getting all the cables that we already had in the right place, threaded through carefully now. Then we can pop in these fillets over the top that we've ripped down to the right angle. And that gives us a lovely junction between the ceiling there and the top. So this is the tilting fillet. It's cut at the angle of the roof. I've got it held the wrong way round. It's pretty not that obvious so if I turn it around the right way and what this does it just slots over the top of the head plate and we can secure everything to everything now it just gives you a nice junction so we can pull that there and give it a tap in here that's basically what it does all right that is it so we can fix straight through into our grounds and we can fix straight up into our grounds as well. We've made it long enough, obviously, to go from end to end. We've got another section here. But before I fix that one, let's just pop this over the top too. Now, I'm not sure if we've got to shoot it in at all. We've just estimated what length it needed to be. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get that fixed in now. And that is the job finished. The wall's finished. We're standing on the last four joists which is our temporary support. And these joists will whip out and they'll go in there. But before I put this M1 in, I'll probably put it in loose, is I'd want to clad that wall through there. Before I do that, I need to run some electric. So for now, this will be as far as we go with this wall. We'll, as I say, we'll probably just temporarily put those other studs in and out of the way and run some noggins straight down the middle. So that's it for this episode. We've stripped the pool floor. We've used the materials. We built the wall, we stood it up, and now we're gonna move on to some other first fix work, some stud work, and preparation for the electrician to come in and start running all these cables to everywhere that we need.